this this is Hello, welcome to the podcast, professors. I'm Tom Nobles, and Will. And I'm Will Forge. Welcome it, back, folks. It's a great to be back. Uh, it's great to be safe as we go through the podcast. We're in the middle of the pandemic here, and I'm all the best because I take it seriously. Exactly what he said. I'm not sure what he said, but we're happy to have you on board here, Professor Tom. It's Today we'll be talking about how to, how to hey. present well visually, which is a good thing. And, and, I want you to be safe, so make sure you wear your mask, Will. Yeah, it, it does sound like you're wearing a mask, which I, I'm very happy I'm that you're... Uh, safe. Abide. You know, if you are the only one in the room, you could perhaps take it off, just because it's, it's difficult to hear you, and we're just trying to establish the, the topic of today's show. You really you really couldn't hear me with the mask on? No, I couldn't hear a word. Oh. Well... Is it, that's that's a little concerning. I'll uh, we'll explain why, but uh, stick around, podcast professors. Uh, our theme this week: how to make the podcast the focal point of your entire life. How to get your life to revolve around your podcast and not vice versa. That's right. Stick around. We'll be right back after this break, right here on Podcast Professors. The pros. Hello. I want to be a manchi boy. Listen to Omaha's new goofy food podcast, The Munchie Boys. Every week, we get food from a different local restaurant. Let's go. We munch. Yes, there is munch. And talk about the experience. What we got. Where did we go? We're still there. Two boxes of food. In lighthearted banter. I just jammed the rest of the Mediterranean in my mouth. Meatball-based items. In a way that is both zany. This is going to be crazy. We might end up throwing up. And fun. My hands are burning. Hell yeah. Every episode features an exclusive song. Do, 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 do. Where we sing about our weekly adventures and feature a different analog synthesizer. It's a synth model. Play the track now. Now. Yeah. We need to. Yeah. It sounds like ha ha rock. Check out Munchie Boys on Spotify, YouTube. Streaming or streaming. And most other digital outlets. Uh-huh. That's what happens. Munchie, 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 Munchie Boys. Boys. And welcome back to Podcast Professors. I am Podfessor Tom. And I'm Podfessor Will. We got uh, quite the show for you. This is uh, lesson three. Lesson three in our 54-part series of how to successfully do a podcast. Uh, the focal point this week, if you missed the beginning, is how to make your, your podcast the focal point of your entire life. We got some good tips for you today, too. I'm excited about this one, Will. Oh, I'm just thrilled, Tom. I'm I'm uh, excited to teach our audience finally how to present well visually. You know oh, yeah, how to yeah. uh, to maintain a good appearance, how to show off, um, how to how to look good. You know while you're talking good. I think it's so an too. Art form. It's uh, it's several plates that need to be balanced on the uh, on the edges of uh, sticks. You know, but uh, I will say this, Tom: if little Ben Shapiro can do it, then pretty much anyone can do it. That's true, and I think it's important that we note that in today's society, nobody really wants to just listen to audio. We want visuals. We're visual learners. We're, you know, aroused right. by visuals more uh, more often than we are by sound. At least in my case, that's been uh, it's been the experience for my audiences. And if I really want to get that full peak excitement. There has to be a visual component. And so that's why we're going to talk to you about doing a visual component this week. Um, however, we, we have actually, ha- Tom, funny, yeah. funny, you sh- funny, you should. Me- sorry to interject oh, here. Funny, yeah. you should mention many people are telling me and several studies uh, suggest that uh, when you have a visual element to your podcast, it actually helps uh, retention rates. So your people are going to stick around longer. My, again, yeah. Many people are telling me this. Oh, it's a universal problem, and there's a universal solution. So not only on my end, but on your end especially. Although there, there's a, you know, there's sort of a point like there is a peak on a mountain. You go up so far, and you start to go down again. I think that there is maybe some element of you see a little too much. And I think in my case, adding the visual component does nothing but bring in additional uh, viewers who are liking what they're seeing. In your case, uh, I wonder if maybe a, a dark room would be helpful. You know, Tom, I'm I'm really just going to hope that that wasn't some sort of dig at uh, my personal appearance, uh, and just I'm just going to assume that this is the the, you know, this is the inner director in you sort of coming out 
you know, I know you're a, a absolute freak when it comes to framing and image quality and everything. Me, on the other hand, I'm I'm a more uh, bohemian approach. So I'm I'm hoping this is what uh, what sparked you to say that, and not any sort of uh, you know dig at my grotesque personal appearance. Well, gr- gr- I think you've you've mentioned in the past. I would say there's the grotesque has its viewers. There's always been an appeal for the gothic, the penny dreadfuls, uh, you know, the murder stories, the true crime. But uh, before you get into the grotesque, there's just sort of the the mundanely bad looking, um, and you don't want to be squarely in that category. And uh, you know, I'm not I'm not throwing around any allegations. I don't mean to offend anybody, but you can look at data and you can find some things, right? And so sometimes less is more. Is all I'm saying. And sometimes uh, nothing is better than something at all. I'll just let you think about that one. Well, I think at this point, we should probably get into the lesson itself. So, you know, how do you add a visual component? Well, it occurs to me that uh, you may be wanting to see what we look look like right now as we record this episode. But unfortunately, Paul, our intern, hasn't set anything up. Where's our where's our video? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I don't I don't know what happened to our we were promised a, a video live stream, right, Paul? You're still with I mean, Paul, right? I mean, I'm I'm not in the same room with you, thank God, but I think Paul is. Yeah, I I, I got Paul over here. He's tr- sorry. Uh, as with every show, Paul tries to get our attention while we're uh, live streaming. So, obviously, not the best time to do this. What's his right, problem Paul? now? What 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 um, does Paul want? You know, you know what, Tom? He's explaining to us why he sent out a memo uh, saying that we needed to look good visually. Uh, why we needed to sort of, you know, comb our hair and uh, brush our eyebrows, trim those nose hairs. You know, he's he's saying we got to look good. And then, you know, we come into the studio looking like a uh, million dollars. Me, my, myself, personally, uh, I can't really speak for you. I can't really see you. A no, billion uh, dollars but, in my case. You know, I, I come into the studio looking. Okay, well, let's not inflate our net worth here. Regarding, you know, what I look like personally, I, I put a lot of effort into this and then I get into the studio and, and God damn it, Paul tells me, you know, oh, yeah, the uh, the live uh, video stream we were supposed to have uh, was actually uh, th- the link had crashed somehow. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a tech wizard, so apparently the link crashed. Uh, so long story short, we're not going to have any uh, visual element to today's show. Um which is kind How of a problem, crash? Paul. We just started. Point. We just started. How did uh, it crash? Yeah, I don't. Well, let me tell you, Tom. It didn't crash due to the amount of people uh, watching this because there's less than than 200 right now. So you better tell Paul. <clears throat> anyways, I don't want it to crash unless it's because Paul. the bandwidth of the internet can't sustain it. You know, unless it's a Kim Kardashian internet breakage, we better be streaming and we better have video. Paul. You tell Paul that. You Paul, you keep that. A... You keep that menacing tone when you tell him. Oh, believe me, I've been telling him quite a bit here. I've just been muting myself in between when you're talking so I can just berate Paul mercilessly. And listen, Paul, Paul, this isn't a Quibi show. We didn't want to fuck it up. God. Okay, yeah, can you... Oh, my God. Paul is... Right, well, now, uh, es- essentially, you know, as we move on with the show, just to give you an image, because, again, you can't see what we're doing here, but Paul is just fiddling around with some wires at this point, and uh, I think he's trying to sort of correct the stream issue Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to me when... Okay, so uh, moving onward, anyways, um, <clears throat> how to present well visually, Tom? Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, to some extent, uh, you just got to work with what you have, you know? So if you're a, a beautiful, beautiful portrait of a man, you just turn on that camera and you let the people see. You let them watch. And just like with any great piece of art, the more they look, the more they notice the nuance. They notice the shadows. They notice the different complexities in the skin, you know, and, uh, and they appreciate, right? I mean, sometimes depending on the person, and I speak from personal experience when I say this, you actually lose some of the quality of the retention of the audio itself because people are so lost in the image. They're looking into you. They're looking into your eyes. They're looking into your mouth, your nose, whatever it might be, your lips, and they're just lost in it, right? They can't even hear the audio anymore because they're so focused and uh, to me, that's the that's the peak of really adding a visual component is 
you add so many layers that people can get lost in, where if they want to just listen to the audio, they can close their eyes. If they don't want to actually hear what you're saying, but they still want an invigorating, exciting experience, they keep them open, and more or less their ears have closed. Yes. Well, for those of us who are not uh, mesmerizingly beautiful, and I... I can't speak to I, that, so I'll let you. I'll let you speak to that. I'm going to lump you in here because uh, basically both of us in the show, um, we're not particularly... Um, you know, we're neither of us look like Brad Pitt. You and Paul, you're talking about. Well, no, I Paul's over there fiddling around with some wires. Paul's. But, uh, I I will say uh, I haven't seen Paul, and I don't want to, but I don't picture him looking like like Brad Pitt. And uh, otherwise, clearly, you're talking about yourself. So it's an interesting category, and I, I'm curious to hear the insights from th- that world that I don't know. Well, yes. Well, if you'd let me finish here uh, again, the, the problem with people who perceive themselves as a, a little bit more attractive, they just sort of butt in and, you know, they, they sort of yeah, shift that's, the focus. I, from that's the that's, that's fascinating to me just them, because I, themselves. Haven't, I have no idea what that would be like. Uh, people always let me finish my sentences and usually usually people shut up around me because they just want to hear my insights. So I have no idea where you're going with this. It could also be that you just uh, you just talk the longest and the loudest and then people just sort of. And listen, never mind. Anyways, listen. the point I was going for here, you know, not everybody is mesmerizingly beautiful. You know, we, we do have people amongst us who are, you know, uh, dare I say, average uh, looking. And, um, you know, some people who even maybe you have a good voice. Maybe maybe you've been told you have a voice for radio and a face for radio, too. And the thing is, you know, you got to work with that. Like Tom, like Professor Tom said, you know, you have to actually uh, maybe find a way to use that to your advantage. Right. So, um, so instead of uh, visually just, you know, uh, a stream of yourself, a stream of you recording, maybe it's a, an ambient lake. Uh, maybe it's a very relaxing, uh, you know, countryside scene that you're, that you're uh, showing on, on screen there. Maybe it's uh, some visually irrelevant images. You know, maybe you're telling a story and, uh, and you just need to spice things up a little bit. Maybe you're, uh, maybe you're an animator, you know, maybe you... Uh, get those little post-it notebooks and you draw little stick figures in the corner where the man's catching the fish, you know, Hey, you got a talent, use that to your advantage. And I'm just saying, if you, if you have anything visual added into your podcast and uh, just watch those retention rates soar. It's great advice for those of you listening and those of you hosting who don't have the face that can sustain an hour of content. So I appreciate those of us hosting, those of us hosting who, who do, who do have that problem. We, we tend to sort of uh, assume that, Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just record uh, my facial expressions for an hour. You know, that's um, maybe that's helpful. Maybe that's um, maybe that's even a little bit funny, but um, God damn it. If it isn't a little bit boring, you know, you got to shake it up every once in a while, throw in an image of, uh, you know, let's say, let's say, hypothetically, Tom, I'm doing a podcast about Helen Mirren, mm. you know, yeah. the Helen Mirren show. Sure. You know, we're, we're, we're just talking about her life, her career, um, her acting style, et cetera. We're uh, examining the life of Helen Mirren, uh, Dame, Dame Helen Mirren, I, I believe. That is true. So yeah. we're, uh, we're examining the life of the Dame and uh, we say, oh, OK, uh, I'm going to I'm going to show myself uh, for uh, about 30 seconds here and then I'm going to. Uh, a pepper in a little clip of, uh, of the magical experience uh, that is watching Dame Helen Mirren act, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or, Oh, I'm going to interject this image of her from the, uh, the Met Gala uh, from 2019. You know what I mean? You, you have to pepper in those images so that it uh, retains your, right. yeah. uh, I mean, your viewers. If you're not, I mean, if, if you're not the most beautiful person in the world, which unfortunately Helen Mirren is not, uh, you have to add that in. Uh, in my case, and I'm just coming off of a large seminar where I didn't uh, have to add anything. Uh, you know, my face is enough. And sometimes sometimes your face isn't enough. And that's a difficult lesson for you to learn. But uh, for those of you out there, uh, those of you the less fortunate, you know, uh, just accept it. Look yourself in the mirror. And if you can't stare at yourself for a couple of hours on end, then maybe you got to add some supplemental images. And it's a tough realization. And there are therapists out there you can talk to on Zoom. Uh, which I believe is our first sponsor today, right? We have uh, a sponsor for online therapy. Maybe uh, you could you could tell us a little bit about that, Will. Oh, yeah, definitely. So um, Therapy, uh, spelled T-H-E-R-A-P-L-Y, Therapy is a new app uh, basically geared towards your average therapy user, right? 
So you, uh, let's say you go to therapy twice a week. You lay on a couch, you know, you sit in a chair. Uh, let's say you just stand there, you know, standing uh, while your therapist is seated, sort of yelling. That All of that is perfectly normal within the bounds of therapy. But in these uh, weird pandemic times, uh, it's, it's a little bit uh, different, right? So they tell you uh, yelling actually uh, spreads your, uh, your aerosol cloud uh, to an, a, an exorbitant level. So you definitely don't want to do that. Um, yelling in a mask just doesn't have the same effect, you know. Uh, you could probably attest to this, you know. That's true. Like that's what you've been doing all by yourself for well, a while I, now. I've so. been I've been safe. That's true. You've been, I've you've been, been uh, protecting yourself from uh, your own uh, worst healthy enemy. Man. That's healthy good. Man. Yep. Yes. Well, all you know, all the best of health to you, uh, and we're we're glad that you do wear a mask. But in therapy, it just doesn't have the same effect. You know, you want to yell at your therapist. You want to tell them, you know, look here, you 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 uh, uh, son. You know, look here. Uh, I'm I'm not happy about this, right? Um, with therapy, you get that added uh, benefit of still being able to yell at your therapist, uh, but just on the other side of the phone, right? So it's perfectly safe. It's sanitary. It's um, basically the most uh, attuned thing to uh, our current era, um, our new world, if you will, uh, that you can do as far as therapy. Uh, you can meet with thousands of verified therapists. Uh, you can uh, just pay a small monthly fee of about $125 and you get almost limitless therapy. So you can meet with, um, you know, all of our therapists worldwide. We have therapists in uh, about 65 different countries. So we're very excited to work with uh, local therapists and, uh, you know, therapist unions. Um, we're just very excited about this new opportunity with therapy. So um, yeah, if you want to check it out today, use uh, code pod profess. Um, we'll, we'll include that in the link. Again, uh, the the code pod profess gets you twenty percent off. So Actually, I uh, Will, I, I don't know. Maybe they sent me a different code, but the code they gave me was code crazy nuts, which I thought was a little bit in poor taste. I think that's actually for our next uh, oh. next read time. Whoops, I, I got it mixed. I mean, you can see what I did there. I you know I just got some wires crossed. My bad. Sorry. Crazy nuts is not the therapy code, so I apologize, everyone. Actually, I mean, should we just do the next sponsor or? No, we'll save it. We'll save it. Yeah, we'll save it. Yeah. Okay. So ignore the crazy nuts. Let's talk about therapy. Um, Yeah. I will say. uh, Have you done therapy before, Tom? Um, I would assume that you have. In fact, you know, you probably have had multiple therapists. What are what are your opinions of all of them? And uh, do you think it's beneficial? Well, I will say, uh, therapy did set us both up with a therapist that we could see for free for a couple of months. Uh, just to be able to give better testimonials when we do our uh, sponsorships. So, you know, I did see uh, a certain doctor who, uh, you know, kept asking me questions about my childhood. And I got to say, you know, I uh, I am a public persona. And as a public persona, I don't want a lot of... A persona of... non gratis. Well, Sorry, I'm, just... oh, oh, no, I'm the opposite. I'm allowed <laughs> everywhere. Persona all gratis. Um, you know, they, they always are trying to get me to go places. They're always trying to get me to talk at things. And, uh, you know, I told the I told the therapist, uh, you know, look, I don't need all my uh, dirty laundry hanging out here. I don't know what Reddit, you know, posts you're making at night and our therapy are crazy. Nu- I guess it wouldn't be crazy nuts. We've, we've established that's not related. I really thought it was. So, that's, you know, I, I got a whole lot of material that I wrote here on my board that uh, you know, I was going to I was going to get them canceled. And apparently that was not true. That was not that was not the way to go. But, uh, yeah, you know, he's asking me questions like, what were your parents like? Do you get along with your dad? And uh, I said, you know what? Uh, I like to be an enigma. I'm an enigma. All right. So uh, Thank let's God for the mute button. It's like if, if I had to talk to Paul, there's Paul. Is Paul complaining about me? Oh, uh, hey, uh, sorry. Did, were you um, you were saying something? I apologize. Look, you tell Paul to shut up when I'm trying to say things. All right. There's yeah, a, shut up, Paul. There's a chain of command here. You Paul, know what he said, Tom? He said, uh, "Thank Christ, this mute button's working." That's what I thought he said, and uh, he sounds kind of like you, I have to say. So it, it's it's sort of hard to tell you apart. It's a weird internet problem. Well, Paul's not mic'd, so you, you can't hear him really. Well, let's let's do that on purpose. Let's try to keep it that way. I don't want to hear that guy. I don't Uh, think anyone does. Well, and so, I mean, unlike Paul, people want to hear about me, just like that therapist did. And I had to tell him, you know what? I appreciate the fact that I'm an enigma. I am an enigmatic persona in our culture, and I want to stay that way. So I shut the door on that. And by shutting the door, I mean, I closed the Zoom window and I was in therapy no more. 
And honestly, that's the beauty of therapy. I mean, you don't have to storm out of your therapist's office, uh, you know, irate, uh, you know, sort of cussing out or, or screaming at the receptionist, you know, I'll see you next week, Kate. You know, you don't you don't uh, you don't have any of that awkwardness. You know, it's right. the uh, the simplicity of just hanging up your cell phone uh, and, and terminating your therapy uh, session. And of course, you don't get paid for what you don't use or, or we don't get paid for what what you uh, what you use. Uh, so essentially, you get some sort of money back. Um, but the thing is, we, we do encourage you to take the full hour because, again, our therapists are all board certified. And uh, I, I spoke to. But uh, Will, we're, you're, there's a lot of sound in the back. Can, is, that doesn't sound like Paul. What's going on there? Uh, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> well, <laughs> this is awkward. You know that, um, did you see that famous uh, uh, video on CNN probably two months ago where uh, a, a world-class professor was being uh, interviewed by, um, by experts? Well, and uh, I two kids ran into the the Zoom stream. You know, his his children, right. presumably. Yeah. I mean, unless he's part of the, yeah. Uh, depends on which his children. Depends on which island so, he was on. You know, whether they're his children. It really or, does. Yeah. Was he in the Caribbean, for example? Right. But yes. Anyways, um, I think uh, hopefully not on the island of Saint Thomas. Uh, this professor was uh, sort of streaming uh, video uh, from his laptop. And then you see two kids run into the corner. And essentially, that's what's happened here, Tom. I have quite a few kids of my own. I'm a very proud father. Oh, I didn't know that. Congratulations, I suppose. Yeah, well, you know, uh, sex couplets is a really uh, unfortunate situation. But, um, you know <laughs> what they say, uh, six is better than one. I mean, it depends on the context once again. I don't know. Sometimes sometimes six is better than one. Uh, when, when were they born? Um, well, the, they're, um, they're all about two, at least six of them. And then the other, um, the other two were, uh, uh twins. So <laughs> blessed with many children at wow, once. A lot um, of fertility, a lot of fertility in that house. You know, the, the sad thing is, um, too much fertility. I think, uh, in fact, if I, if I lived in China, for example, I don't know how many of, um, how many of any of these kids I'd be able to, well, certainly the twins, but anyways, uh, so yeah, so my, my beautiful wife and uh, Helen and my, and me, uh, we, we have about eight kids of our own and, uh, you know, God bless them. They're all just so fun to be around every moment of my w- waking day. Um, but they do come in to, to, uh, interfere in my personal work sometimes. So if that happens, you know, I apologize. I have eight children, you know, uh, it does get a little stressful sometimes. And, um, you know, my, my dear wife uh, putting up with this right now, it's, it's quite a lot for her to handle. So occasionally, you know, you get a trickle of two or three kids that walk into the room. Is that two or three? That sounds like 30 kids. That sounds like we're on a, uh, like a playground. What's that? Where are you? No, re- that's just the eight of them. They're all in the room with you in your studio and Paul? They're in the backyard right now. I think they've organized some sort of uh, baseball. There's enough kids for both for teams on both sides. Oh my God! It's really loud. Uh, Helen, can you? Uh, okay, I'm going to close the window here. I, I again, I apologize. I have eight children, so <laughs> you know, uh, shoot me, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> I really, I can't stand uh, you know having more than two. My dream was to have one son, you know, and I got eight kids. Uh, seven of which are girls. So, you know, I'm really just trying to do the best I can here. Um, and you did live your dream, though. You do have the one son. So that's that's impressive, you know. Uh, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of sacrifice that I, I, I relate to it. And I know every single stress that you've imagine, gone through. It, uh, let me just interject. Imagine making, uh, making eight uh, kids under the age of three wearing face masks. You know, that's, it's an impossibility. It's almost like I, I can't find enough duct tape in my um yeah it's you know uh, as you as you were saying parents parental frustrations you know they're yeah, universal yeah. no i mean I, I don't have kids myself but I, I understand exactly what you're going through because i do have two cats and uh i've had let all- me say this let me say this uh, well i'm you're not going to send your cats back to school but i cannot wait until we can send our kids back for kindergarten it's just it'll be so nice to just get them out of the house you know and uh, whether that's a great idea or not at this at this point, you know, let's not even go there. But Look, let's just the, say that it'll be nice for me and Helen to have a, a break. For the sake of this podcast, even just in terms of audio, I mean, it seems like it's in the best interest of your career to get them out of the house. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe this is actually the perfect segue into our next uh, portion of the, the show here. 
uh, how to make a make your podcast the focal point of your life, right? Yes. So I I make this uh, the number one priority of my life. And you know uh, what? We're, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go to a quick break here. We'll be right back with that segment. So how to make your podcast the focal point of your entire life? Right here on Podcast Professors. We'll be back after the break. Stick around, folks. And we're back. All right. So how to make your podcast the focal point of your entire life is something that we all struggle with. Everybody who has a podcast probably also has a life. Unless you're Joe Rogan and you literally podcast for eight hours a day on your YouTube page, you probably have other things going on, whether that's you know a spouse, whether it's eight children, whether it's two cats, whether it's just another job. You know, There's a lot that you have to juggle. However, if you really want to be good at it, you got to stop juggling. You got to drop all those balls except the one ball that's labeled podcast. And that's your ball. And that's all you get to play with for the rest of your life. Well, not only that, it is the money ball. So it can sort of support the other balls um, while you're not juggling them, you know. So you got to sort of prioritize. Uh, I know you might not particularly be uh, great at, um, at podcasting. You know, you might just be listening to this show, for example, and thinking about how you can break into the market but um the thing is you know even with our expert advice uh you you really just have to to prioritize so you need to make podcasting the focal point of your life you know you can buy a fancy microphone uh you know you can look great on camera but uh unless you make this uh, a main priority you, you know it'll never happen nothing will materialize it's true it's true nothing nothing at all and so Will, you were just talking before the break there about your eight children and how you sometimes just have to get them out of the house, whether that's sending them to school in a pandemic or whether it's, I don't know what, uh, you know, begging, begging people to babysit for you. I mean, how do you do that? How do you balance a family and a podcast? Babysitters, Tom, I will say this. Uh, babysitters have been the saving grace of, uh, of my, my, not only my marriage, but my career and uh, my you know, my parental situation, uh, you, you always want to have some backup, right? So me and um, me and Helen will go out occasionally for, you know, a date night or something. And uh, we need a babysitter, right? We don't trust any stranger, but um, we have two or three on speed dial. So mm. it's just good to have, you know, it's good to have people who know how to look after eight children under the age of three. You know, and that's a very select group of people. Well, so. I mean, I would imagine uh, in order to really do it right, you basically have to have uh, like a live an au pair, you might say, uh, or perhaps a team of au pairs to or an aubergine. Yeah, uh, you know, and I, I would think that the obligations would be you don't really have time to raise them, you don't really have time to teach them, you know, how to live life. You don't have time to teach them any real lessons or morals or any of that. So, I mean, you have to outsource in order to do the podcast right and to keep your focus exactly. where it should be. Exactly. And the thing is, this this might sound a bit selfish, Tom, but, you know, this is coming from a parent of eight. So uh, I don't know how on earth you could label me a selfish person. Uh, but honestly, I would say that, you know, at some point you have to realize this is my life, too. You know, I, I appreciate having kids that I have to look after that I'm, I'm legally bound to raise until the age of 18. But, uh, you know, this is my my life. This is my experience, too. You know, and you don't need to let your uh, children or your uh, your day job or anything steal your career from you. You know, if mm -hmm. it requires it, quit your job. If it requires it, you know, um, don't have those kids. You know, if it requires it, you know, the thing about podcasting is that it's time consuming as hell. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to sit there for a few hours and just talk stream of consciousness for some people. And some other people even write scripts, which will probably double the amount of time it takes to, to shoot the podcast, as it were. But, uh, you know, the, the main point I'm trying to make here is that you, you need to prioritize in such a way that you're sort of stripping down any of those extras from your life and you're just sort of gutting the whole interior of your personality and sort of replastering the house and repainting the walls with just sort of podcast. You know, how can I make uh, how can I make this coffee shop interaction uh, part of my podcast later? You know, how can I uh, how can I turn this funny story about uh, how I ran out of toilet paper at three o'clock in the morning? Uh, the interesting opener to my show, you know, right. things like this. Yeah. You just need to uh, sort of obsess about how you can find certain things maybe even mundane things 
and turn them into great podcast material. We I mean, have listen a... to any NPR show. It's it's amazing. They'll turn their their story about a weekend barbecue into a five, ten minute intro. We have a, a great system here in America where if you really want to have a life that is yours, that where you're your own boss, you have to find ways you get to, excuse me, you get to find ways to monetize every single element of your entire existence. And that's what podcasting, that's the door it opens up, is every mundane detail of your life, you now have to figure out how to turn into product that will make you money. So it's, it's a beautiful system, and you, gotta, you just got to pat America on its weird, weirdly shaped back, you know, when you think about it. You got to try not to hit the hunchy part of the back, but you got to pat him, you know, pat America, Uncle Sam right on the back there saying, you know, this is, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I love how you just monetize this. You know, if I could, Tom, I would just hold a microphone up to my mouth uh, 24 hours a day, uh, including when I sleep. I usually uh, I do. I think on the show before I've, I've mentioned uh, I have an ASMR channel mm -hmm. where I just record the sounds of me sleeping. Yeah, and, I mean, um, well, I understand. it's doing incredibly well. What I've heard, uh, I think you you know some of our coworkers have been talking about it, but uh, they said that there was a rough patch in your life, and if you hadn't figured out a way to make your snoring into a product, you might be homeless right now. I would definitely be out on the street. And the thing is, the the uh, I've always relied on the kindness of strangers. You know, they they've always helped me out. And uh, and the thing is, if you put a good product out there, you know, as an artist, you will get recognition. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be great art; it just needs to be art. And, uh, you know, the, once again, the beauty of America is there may not be accessible health care and you may not be treating your sleep apnea, but you're making money from it. So it all works out in the end. Exactly. You know, I don't have money to go to the doctor for my snoring issue and I don't have money for all those nasal strips I'm supposed to keep buying. But I do have the time to upload the sounds of my snoring to YouTube and uh, I will take that money and use that for food. Thank you very much. And that's the beauty of this country. And I think in order to have a good lifestyle with your podcast, you know, you just have to, you have to mess around with things. And one of the things that you have to mess around with is your schedule because you really can't be making it up as you go along. You have to commit and you have to stay committed. And one of the things, perhaps the most important thing in podcasts is you have to do a show every single week. If you're not doing a show every single week, your podcast is going to fail. And you have to figure out what is it going to take? What are all the sacrifices? What are all the priorities I'm going to have to drop? You know, I'm not going to talk to my significant other for three months until I get this thing figured out, right? If that's what it takes to get a podcast off the ground, then that's what you have to do. And you have to make those sacrifices because this is the most important thing in the world. And your schedule is what's going to keep it exciting and keep it accessible to your listeners to keep them coming back and keep them subscribing. Think of it like this. This is the only thing you will do that will matter for the rest of your life. This is your impact. Oh, after you're dead, though. I mean, what are they going to when you're dead? Of what course. are people going to what's your legacy going to be? It's going to be a stream and RSS feed that's accessible on Apple Podcasts. That's your legacy. And you have to be aware of that. And you have to treat it that way. You have to think of it that way and you have to revere it and give it the respect it deserves. And that means disrespecting everything around you. And that means devoting time every week to this. You know, mm -hmm. that, that means, uh, you know, myself, for example, I, I do this show every week with you, Professor Tom. Right. Yeah. And uh, I got to say, it's been it's been enjoyable. You know, last week when we did a show, for for example. Well, um, well I mean, we, we, we have taken a little hiatus. It's, you know, we, we did. We may have taken. Well, that's a, true. There's been a couple months here uh, between episodes two and three, but it's you know we're, it really? we're we're at the level of pro, wow. so you know these these lessons are for of you course. as you're as you're you know getting acclimated, right? It's not like Kubrick took everything he learned in film school, right? He messed with it, but he was Kubrick, right? Of you course. know, we're at that level. We're the Kubricks of podcasting right now, and uh, we are peak Kubrick. And I feel like the fact that we're doing this as a master class uh, also uh, it's just sort of a, a flex of our. Um, abilities uh, as professionals in our industry here i would say that that we can take that time off you know we we are blessed in these horrible horrible times that we're living in uh where this is you know this violent disease going around we are blessed to be able to just uh you know go ahead and shoot a, a another episode for our master class you know we are so happy that you know we we were the ones asked by master class to record uh you know how to podcast they could have asked joe rogan in fact, they probably will ask Joe Rogan at some point, but 
we did it first. And you know, the thing is, had we not been uh, had we not been devoting time each week, had we not been devoting you know resources, uh, we we never would have got to this point. And that's essentially the 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 point we're trying to make here. Uh, that's right. With the second that's right. part of the show well, is that you know you need to make that podcast the focal point of your life until you die, yes. basically. And I mean, if you're if you're really prolific, you'll have a backlog of about a month or two of episodes that will continue to air after you're dead, because you don't know when you're going to die a lot of the time. Uh, but you do know you have you know you have those deadlines, right? So I usually have it set up so the next several weeks are already up in the podcast app, ready to publish on their own. So that will be your legacy, and you just have to be aware of that. And uh, when you get to our level, one of the things you have to realize is you will get offers to do all kinds of other side gigs. And sometimes it's worth it to do those side gigs. And so as the pandemic really started to hit, or at least when I think it did, when I emerged from my bunker, I was immediately given an offer to do a 35-hour series. That's a master class that really is the culmination of all my academic studies that I've been doing in my life. I may have a P.O.D. Uh, doctorate in podcasting, but one of the things that's always been my passion. What is, is a uh, po- uh, po- w- sorry, say that certification one more time. P.O.D. It's the podcasting doctoral program that I also. You po- know what? I it po- just I unfortunately, Tom. I you know obviously I'm, I'm a man of academia myself. I, I do have a Ph.D. Uh, right. So I don't yeah. So, so you so you know you know well Thanks. yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you know Ph.D. stands for something that's real and and. The P.O.D. makes me think of piece of, you know, it, it just doesn't um, it doesn't have that same ring to it. You know, is that even a real academic certification? I mean, would NYU accept that uh, as a transfer credit? Or, I'll have you know, I, I pioneered the program with the collaboration of NYU because you got all these people like you who are getting Ph.D.s, which is kind of like getting a B.A. and saying I'm ready to write a novel. You know, a B.A. is not an M.F.A., just well, like I do a PhD resent that. is not a POD. So I do resent the insinuation that what I'm, I'm becoming a not not me, of course, but a professor. Uh, PhDs are uh, are becoming cultured in the art of just writing books. You know, it, for Christ's sake, I would have gone to journalism school if I wanted to learn how to do any sort of writing. What did you get your PhD uh, you know, in? What was it? Wasn't in podcasting? No, it was the history of radio and its impact on uh, uh, antiquated. Society. That's why I'm uniquely. Uh, talented uh to talk about podcasting you know it's a basically a an evolution from radio into you know the new century here so essentially you have no real qualifications to be a podfessor and i appreciate the you know it takes some confidence to be able to admit what you don't know uh and uh you know we we've established this so you sort of have had your donald rumsfeld moment here we know what you know we know what you don't know which is a lot uh, but unfortunately for you, I have a POD, so I know quite a lot, and I am ready to answer questions you might have. Unfortunately, I do maybe... actually have a, a few questions now that you, you mentioned. Well, it. So here, you, here's you what know. I can recommend. Why don't you and why don't you enroll in the podcast professor master class, just like the rest of the people who have things that they need to know from the genius in well, the room, who's not really in the room, the genius on the Zoom, and uh, you know, take a seat and take some notes. You know, as a co um, a co teacher of this master class, I do um, appreciate the fact that you know I I, um, I can watch the show after the fact. You know, that's certainly an option, but I prefer to just ask the questions while we're doing the show. If if it's not too much trouble, if you're able to even defend uh, whatever you've written, uh, I'm assuming able to defend that it's, anything. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, because I, uh, I got a, I got a POD. I can answer any question in the entire world. Will that's what that means. All right. Well, as it pertains to um, to what you've written, I mean, um, would you like to say anything? Or oh, yeah. Was, so, well, did you just want to say that you wrote something for the sake of you know defending your POD, uh, well, or did, were you going to introduce the? Is it is the book even on uh, for sale? For it's, well, it's an audio book, and uh, you know it's a thirty four thirty five part odyssey. And uh, I was approached by Little Brown, who said, "Hey, look, we want to use your talents." Brown Publishing. Yeah, that's Ooh, right. S- sign of a good. Sorry, continue. It was something where I was uniquely qualified because of my audio background as well as my uh, my doctorate, as I think I've mentioned once or twice already. Uh, you know, you don't need to keep mentioning the doctorate, but uh, it speaks for itself. You can tell. You can tell. And in, in my case, once I start speaking, it's clear. 
Um, and so one of the things that they were interested in is they said, we know that you've got this background in podcasting and we wish we'd offered you the gig for the podcast professors, but those bastards over at masterclass got to you first. And they basically were trying to, you know, swoop me up before somebody else did for another side gig, which in this case was a philosophical inquiry. And so, yeah, I consider it my life's work, my magnum opus. Uh, the, the thing that I will be remembered for more so than this, in part because I did not have an incompetent professor uh, who I was working with. I did not have, uh, you know, I'm trying to think, you know, like a little sidekick. It's like uh, once, once Scrappy-Doo entered Scooby-Doo, the whole integrity of the project was called into question. And I feel that that might be an issue we're running into here. Well, was- I, unfortunately, I mean, I, I, I hate to break in, uh, sort of butt in here, but uh, I do also have a problem with, uh, you know, a little Igor of my own. I'm just sort of trying to to, oh. to, to co-teach as best I can here. And um, even Paul has agreed with me in the past that, you know, this should not have been a, a co-taught course. You know, there's never been a master class that's been co-taught. You know, if you look at uh, the comedy master class, which is truly a masterclass with Steve Martin. Uh, you know, it's just a one man show and uh, I'm not debating or um, we're throwing any controversy into the, you know, the argument of is Steve Martin even funny, you know, for example, should he even be teaching a comedy masterclass? All I'm saying is that, you know, I, I resent the fact that I do have to co-teach uh, as much as I do appreciate another point of view. I would say I would have appreciated, uh, you know, perhaps a, uh, a cogent point of view or uh, perhaps, you know, somebody who is not just going to come onto the, uh, the stream here and, and just sort of ramble. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think sometimes in the same way that Arthur C. Clarke said that advanced technology is indecipherable from magic. Uh, somebody who's so in the know, somebody who has so much technical jargon, so much knowledge inside baseball talk can sometimes sound like gibberish can sound like rambling and i'm sorry i mean once again i appreciate that you're able to acknowledge your shortcomings intellectually uh but i apologize that you're not able to keep up at the same time and i hope i hope you're able to improve as the as this goes on i will be teaching all of you listening all of you watching one day and uh and the one of you who is also co-teaching so you know good luck and um well, actually, this is a perfect segue, I suppose, back to uh, Therapy. Um, at this point, I probably will need to use uh, Therapy at some point. So do log in, uh, folks, with uh, promo code PODCASTPROSH. Um, I might actually just – can we just take a break for uh, about five or ten minutes? To, um, well, how about I keep talking about my, my intellectual pursuits? Because I think, I think there's some cross-promotion purposes and uh, – I, I like to think that a lot of these people are following me from project to project the same way you might follow your favorite auteur uh, at the cinema. I, I do have a quick, sorry to interrupt, um, staggeringly, um, you know, great monologue I hear, but I, I do sense that you do need a, a bit of back and forth bef- so, so the show doesn't sort of dry up wither. So I'm just going to butt in and say, uh, would you mind introducing your book or just telling us a little bit about what, you, what you've what you written? Well, I've been trying to do that for about a half hour now. And yes, I'll, well, the, I get... good, the good thing is, uh, you know, books do have prefaces. So we could just sort of read all of the preface notes there and you could just sort of tell us about the, the actual book itself. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if you're published, but um, oh no, Little Brown Publishing, right? Little Brown is publishing it. Well, and then the situation is over the last couple of months while we were doing a little bit of a hiatus because we can, because, you know, we're at that level. Um, they asked me to submit a manuscript. Um, well, the manuscript in this case was all audio. And so I took the notebooks that I've had just from all of my life's research. I've been very interested in philosophy and some ideas. And uh, I decided to put together just a manifesto, uh, my explanation of the entire universe. And so in a fever dream of about a month of writing and, uh, and then, uh, you know, eventually what I would do is I would sort of jot down some graphs of concepts and I just ramble into the mic. And, uh, instead of actually writing out a script, I just sort of talked and talked and talked and talked until I had about 700 hours of audio. And what I would do is I would cut those clips together. So I wouldn't write out a sentence, but I know I would have all the words in the sentence once I figured out kind of what I wanted it to be. 
And so I just listened to that 700 hours of audio and I'd pick a word here, a word there. And I slowly started to assemble all the audio files of the individual words until I could make my opus, right? My magnum opus. And so eventually I did that. And I had this big audio manuscript, which I just sent to the publisher about a week ago. And I haven't heard back yet, but I assume that's because they're just letting it waft over them. You know, they're letting it settle, uh, bef- you know, trying to understand the genius much like you are. You know, they're just, they're probably just letting it sit in a, you know, on a stack of other papers somewhere, just letting it breathe, you know, giving it a little time. And I, uh, who knows, maybe in, in 20 years, they'll go back into the cellar and they might even, um, they might even find it. I, I think much like you, they have to fight with it a little bit. Some of the ideas are so explosive. Some of the ideas are so difficult to wrap your mind around that you got to do a little fighting before you do the hugging, right? You and, know what? Now that you say that, um, that it was written in sort of a fever dream panic, uh, I would imagine that it would be difficult for them to sort of comprehend what's going on. Um, you know, they, they say that Taxi Driver, driver was, um, you know, the, the famous film was written in, in three days, but yeah. that would actually be considered art. So um, the the thing is, you know, there's a very, it, it doesn't work for everyone, you know, the, the feverish approach. It does, sure doesn't. And uh, I'm once like those who can't do webcams, those who can't write in fever dreams, I, I don't understand their plight, but I have empathy for them. Sympathy, maybe, maybe not empathy. Anyway, the project itself, the manifesto, uh, it, it really, it really is just a, a, a dynamite piece of work. And I, and I, I, sorry to interrupt again. I'll just, you know, be the, um, the sort of the reporter here, uh, just uh-huh. interjecting with questions to sort of steer the conversation um, again, so it doesn't sort of broaden out to such a, a degree that it dries up and, and sort of withers. But anyways, um, you you wrote this book uh, in your bunker, correct? You just wrote this in a. I That's suppose right. a fever dream yeah. uh, in bunker, sort of isolated from humanity. It was important. Uh, how, how do you see that impacting your book? Well, it was. Uh, it, it, would you say that since you were so disconnected from reality, that perhaps the the bunker approach was not beneficial? You know, is that why the publishers are taking so long to get through the the manuscript? What I would say is, uh, it impacted me in the sense that I had heard of the pandemic. And I believed in taking precautions. And part of what that meant was I was washing my hands like a madman. I was covering my mouth. I didn't want any of these germs to get out there because, you know, sometimes people do bunker inspections, right? And so uh, just while I was there alone in the bunker with my cats, uh, you know, I wore a mask the whole time. And so that meant that I needed to make sure that I was being safe as I recorded it. And so, you know, the whole time as I'm doing it, as I'm recording my, my magnum opus, which, by the way, for those of you who do want to buy it once it gets published, uh, the audio file will be called The Three Scrooges, Wittgenstein, Kant, and Balzac. Rather, the geniuses who, while socially difficult, revolutionized our savage world, an odyssey in 37 hours. I know that's... It's, wow, I would say that that does sound like a, a title that probably hasn't been overlooked by an editor yet uh, or a publisher. Um, oh, but I would say an excellent first draft. Well, in you know, as I'm recording it, you know, where I'll tell you this much, it's difficult and I think it's kind of a snapshot in time. It's difficult to be socially aware of a pandemic while you're writing a fever dream of a manifesto that explains the entire universe, right? So like, you know, as I'm sitting there wearing my mask, uh, you know, I am breathing in all my own fumes. I'm breathing in carbon dioxide. I'm trying to make sense of it all. And it was an extra hurdle that most philosophers, Wittgenstein, Kant, and Balzac included, never had to wear face masks while they wrote their opuses. But I did. And I got to say, I think it made me stronger for it. And uh, as far as the the audio quality, I mean... um you were wearing a mask when you first uh, came on the show here, and it was almost unintelligible. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you wrote everything down, um, and it wasn't just sort of a, an audio transcript of the, the recordings? Well, like like I said, um, I kind of gave up on that early on. And what I decided was instead, I was just going to take little bits of the audio. So I knew I said the word A here, or I said the word the there. And so I just tried to cut that down and put it all together. And I actually, you know... I have a clip of it if you want me to if you want me to play it. Uh, you know, I, I, sure. I don't know if I'm legally allowed to, so keep it on the down low, all you listeners and and you yeah. Know, well, let's yeah, listeners, let's let's hope we don't get sued by Little Brown Publishing. You know, that's it's <laughs> they're a, real a, a major publishing house, so they probably have a, a team of attorneys. So. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Just play the clip. Well, so you know, I should probably set it up a little bit. This is talking about uh, you know metaphysics. 
and some of my feelings on the implications of metaphysics in our world today, particularly uh, when you think about what the internet looks like, when you think about Kanye West and all of that. So here we go. Here's a clip uh, right here of my magnum opus from, well, we'll call it, we'll shorten it to the three Scrooges. So here we go. So we don't make our truth understood by being a false purpose as we hit the truth, the truth. So long as we know that they are meant to be false. No! For a proposition is true. And what we assert it means is the case is the truth is the about the truth. And what it means is the case is the truth about the new conception is true and not false. Not only is that true. I, I, wow. Playing that. That's, say that, um, that really resonates. Um, I, I, I guess. I think I, the first words, um, were English, and then after that, it sort of did I did I pick up on a little maybe maybe some Thai? I'm sorry, it was just very incredibly difficult to understand. Well, you know, I know you you don't have the the doctorate in this, but uh, I understand that to the naked ear, it's maybe a little hard to decipher some of the vowels and some of the consonants. Yeah, I would I would say to the naked ear, uh, you know, the covered or closed mouth uh, is incredibly difficult to to understand. You know, it's um. You didn't record the whole thing in a face mask, did you? I mean, you were you were in the bunker by yourself. There's no there's no point in wearing a mask when you're by alone. You know? I, well, I don't want my cats to get sick. And he, here's what I'll tell you: you don't have a doctor in this. You don't know. All you got to do is throw a couple filters on that bad boy, and it'll be it'll sound like it's you know right off the mic, right in. But I mean, it, it sounded like you had at least two or three filters in the face mask alone. You, you add more filters, you're, you're getting even a reduced sound quality. I mean, I I know you're a professional, but uh, Maybe you maybe you just don't. Maybe you need some, uh, some some assistance from Paul, right? Paul, you you know how to. Yeah, yeah Paul see, can even fix Paul it. Yeah. can understand yeah. the basics. Oh, yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah. No, yeah, send it over to Paul, and Paul will throw a you know uh, uh, a Garage Band filter on it. It'll sound good as new. So th- thanks. Paul will just add a drum machine into the background, and it, it'll it'll all be fine. Uh, was this something you you actually submitted to to editors? I mean, I, oh yeah, I just... yeah, yeah. The, you know, the thirty five hours of it that ended up being perfect, and you know, like I said, it was about eight hundred hours to start with, so I really had to whittle that down. Uh, the final thirty five, I'm really proud of, and uh, it's one of those things. I don't know if you've ever had to work in such an intense, you know, up against such an intense deadline, but you get so stuck in it that by the time you're done, you just want to be free. And so I know there's going to be some editing. I understand that. But the bulk of the work is done, and I'm done having to compile all of it. I've compiled it, and I've whittled it down, and there might be a little bit of refining from here. But essentially, I don't need it. And so what I did is I sent it off. I deleted all my files. They've got the master file of it, and whatever we do from here is up to them. I leave it in their hands. I am free. I have empty hard drives at this point, and I'm ready for something new other than this project, which is my only ongoing commitment at this point. Well, that's uh, that's invigorating. Uh, so glad to hear about this project. Uh, where can people um, where can people get their hands on a copy of this audio book? It sounds um, enlightening. Well, uh, eventually it'll be up everywhere you get books. Uh, I just need to hear back from the publisher. And so once I get an email on that and some details, uh, my my expectation is like when George R. R. Martin drops a manuscript, they drop everything at that publishing house and they do what it takes to get that bad boy out in about three months. So my hope is by Christmas time, you'll have a great present to submit to all your relatives and to mail to them or to just email the audio over to them, however you want to do it, so long as I get the $200 fee. Well, that is just, um, that's incredible stuff. So uh, I'm, we're just so happy that um, that you could uh, plug that, that upcoming part of your career. And, uh, you know, we really uh, appreciate that. Well, I'm sure the listeners and myself, um, you know, I say we, um, we'll look forward to, to, I suppose, um, sort of trying to decipher what you're saying there uh, it's, it's through a your filter. audio book. Easy, It'll be good easy stuff. Fix. Ask Paul right now. Tell Paul. Paul, uh, ask Paul what well, the we name could, of the... We could, surely, we could surely talk about this off the... You know, this is the master class we're teaching here. We but could. Paul thinks it's fixable, right? Paul's not worried about it? Paul, Paul knows. There's just, just a couple filters you throw on, right? Ask, let ask, me give you a little, let me, since we don't have any audio, or, I mean, sorry, we don't have any video over here at the moment. Uh, but let me just give you a little context. Paul's just eating a Hot Pocket right now. So there's not really much I have confidence in Paul doing 
but, other than just eating all of my hot pockets. But Paul isn't worried about that audio quality, right? Paul knows we can fix it. Just, just ask, tell, ask Paul to do a head nod for me, okay? Yeah, he, yeah, he's nodding his head Verti- real adamantly, vertically or horizontally. Yeah, nope, uh, vertically. Oh, yep. okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That's fine then. It's good. It's great. Well, okay, I, I'm not worried about buff, it. I'm not worried at all. We'll buff it out. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm feeling great about it. That's great to It'll hear. Paul's head nod just, uh, you know, stopped my sweat right in its tracks, and I'm really happy about it. So I'm feeling great. I don't know about you. Hey, maybe that's something you can tell to your therapist uh, using Therapy, uh, the new app. Um, not to shift topic again, but we we do have to plug this six times throughout the show. It said so. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to fit it in every possible. That's right. Yeah. Remember, chance. use use sponsor code Crazy Nuts. Oh wait, no, that wasn't right. What was it again? Uh, pod- uh, no, it's podcast props. That's right. Uh, just go just go ahead and use that at the app. <laughs> again, you'll get. Uh, I think it's twenty percent off. What yeah, was whatever? What was our that's- other? What was, Great, sir. What's Crazy Nuts from? What's that What's that sponsor? Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess this is, you know, a great time as any for uh, for continuation of the ads. So we'll just go r- jump right in here. Uh, treenuts.com. Uh, have you ever uh, seen so many nuts? Uh, treenuts.com. Uh, there's quite a selection of nuts here, uh, and we're more than happy to ship them anywhere across the country, provided your order is more than $60 uh, U.S. Uh, treenuts.com. We have pine nuts we have macadamia nuts we have cashew nuts we got all the nuts uh and they're all salted freshly roasted and shipped out the same day so um uh i gotta i gotta say tom uh, i'm just gonna go off the read here but have you ever gone into the store uh, bought an expensive bag of nuts and taken them home to realize that they are several months old and probably have been sitting on the shelf for at least that amount of time i've i've had some walnuts go old on me and uh, I don't know if I bought them old or I just didn't open them in time, but uh, right. it, it tastes like dust when they're old. Yeah, they get pretty rank. Yeah. They get rank real quick. So you don't eat uh, walnuts in at least a month's time. I've, I've found them to be incredibly unappetizing. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you like fresh nuts, uh, if you um, ever have had the issue of nuts going bad on you, uh, just go to treenuts.com. Again, they have shipping over... Uh, with orders of over sixty dollars, um, and use code Crazy Nuts to get fifteen uh, percent off your first order, and also they'll throw in a free bag of their uh, Zulu Trail Mix. I don't know what that. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, spicy sesame sticks, uh, delicious honey roasted peanuts, uh, mesquite barbecue, bagel chips, oof, and. Um, wasabi peas okay well interesting uh zulu trail mix they'll throw in a bag of that for free so uh again use uh code crazy nuts that's um that's gonna get you some real fresh nuts straight from the web again they roast and ship their nuts same day so that's pretty exciting stuff it so, doesn't get fresher than that yeah that's right so what, what was the name of the company again uh treenuts.com so treenuts.com and therapy uh thank you for sponsoring today's show we really appreciate it uh I will ask Paul though. Can you can you try to keep our sponsors uh, different enough so I don't get the codes confused? Because that's really embarrassing, and that's going to probably make somebody mad. Yeah, Paul, I need a better copy. The, the question I asked him about the tree nuts was was like fifteen sentences long. <laughs> Should have been cut down by at least a comma. I mean, it's it's like ridiculous. Look at this. It's like, have you ever had the experience where dry nuts are? inedible and have been sitting on the shelf for six months and taste at least that old and yet you still purchase them bring them home crack open the bag only to discover that they are stale gross disgusting and or miserable to eat Uh, i mean that's just like you know one of six questions i'm supposed to ask here and they're all just incredibly long i mean i you know i wonder sorry i you know i'm happy again uh i'm happy to have treenuts.com as a sponsor it's just that you know maybe we could uh Maybe we could have Paul edit their copy a little bit. Paul, I wonder if there's a if there's a sponsor out there we could get of uh, a hiring service for competent interns. Are there any of those out there? We'd, we'd love we'd love to hear from you if you are. So please reach out because that sounds like a great great service that we'd love to you know throw some money at. Yeah, we would be more than happy to get a, a competent um, <laughs> competent underling. Um, yeah, he, Paul Paul is just eating the second hot pocket. Uh, on his plate right now. And again, these are all hot pockets coming from my freezer. I have eight kids, so I don't, I don't appreciate this. Um, 
How, how are the kids, by the way? She opened up the windshield. They're fine, yeah. You want to check on them again? Or you think they're good? They went to go. Um, no, they went to go play in the pool, and uh, it sounds like. Well, I haven't heard from them in a while, but it sounds like everything's okay. Um, I'm just trusting that everything's fine right now. Because again, uh, I make the podcast uh, the focal point of my life. That's right, and, um, that and that's another, the point. That's the point. Yes. That is one of the uh, the canons that we will add to the uh, the codex. That's right, and make sure that you add a visual component. Make sure that you're always consistent. Make sure you never miss a week and make sure that everything else is no longer a priority, that you're ignoring everything in your life that's not your podcast. And if you do live in a bunker, you know, get out and get some fresh air at least every once in a while. Uh, we, we recommend that, you know, uh, you know, you, you get some healthy air. And stay safe, right? But maybe double check the audio quality before you record uh, a manifesto. I'll let you know though what the what the name of the filter is. Paul's not worried about it, right? So I'm not worried about it. Paul, Paul knows what he. Paul may be the biggest pain in the butt in the world, but he knows what he's talking about when it comes to audio filters. So like I said a couple times already, I'm, I'm really I'm really not sweating it. Yeah, Paul will patch this up, no problem at all. Uh, just keep uh, keep washing your hands, everyone. I know. Uh, uh, I've washed my hands so many times in the past uh, 24 hours that my skin is cracking. So uh, do use moisturizer after you wash your hands. It's pretty much uh, an essential item these days. <laughs> That's right. And we'll be back next week, everybody. Thank you for subscribing to Podcast Professors. Any last thoughts, Will? Um, no, but I will say, um, you know, if you're thinking about having kids, um, you know, maybe uh, think about it a little bit longer. All right. We'll be back. Thanks, everybody.